morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge that's why we're here every day on the bright side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis eczema rosacea acne digestive ailments autoimmune issues of all kinds recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, let us help you change your life today. Let us help you change the lives of loved ones, friends, family members, workmates today. You can reverse any health challenge if you just know a couple of things. You just have a couple of, just a couple of strategies. It's really not that difficult to reverse chronic degenerative disease. We talk about it every day on the bright side. If you have questions, 844-236-6010 about how we can help you, we want to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have, if you want to purchase any of the longevity products or if you want to uh, sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, please head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in purchasing any of our truth treatment products, head to truthtreatments.com. Check out our retinol 5% gel, true serum, truth balm, truth omega-6 healing cream. I formulated them to be healing products. You know, when you think about it, anti-aging is healing. If you can't take your wrinkle cream, your favorite wrinkle cream, and put it on a cut or a scrape and accelerate. Truth Skin Health products are about healing the skin. Healing is anti-aging. That's the bottom line, folks. You can check out all our products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel. All right, our number today, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early. We do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. We're talking fibromyalgia, connective tissue health issues. We've been talking about body work, rolfing, myofascial release, massage. Patients with fibromyalgia using these kinds of techniques can achieve improvements in mood, depression, anxiety, sleep, libido as well as a decrease in chronic pain. Actually moving our joints and our tissues, moving the body is a wonderful way, not just for dealing with fibromyalgia, but for dealing with arthritis, for dealing with energy issues. If you're feeling fatigue, chronic fatigue, and remember chronic fatigue and, and uh, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia go hand in hand. First thing in the morning, you can experience the energizing effect of moving your body. Just jogging in place, walking up and down the stairs, touching your toes, doing yoga stretches. All of these are not just great ways to reduce pain, not just great ways to improve muscle, uh, uh, muscle growth and improve the uh, fl uh, blood flow to the muscles, but they're also great ways to energize the body and to energize the brain. It is impossible to overstate the importance of exercise, of moving the body. A lot of times when we think of exercise, we think of building muscles, we think of getting toned, we think of losing weight, we think of looking good in a bathing suit. But less often do we think of the exercise process of exercising as a way of strengthening the cartilage, of strengthening the connective tissue, as ways of keeping the structural component of the body uh, strong and healthy. This is true for everyone, 
even if you don't have fibromyalgia, even if you're uh, healthy, even if you're strong, just moving the body around can help build connective tissue. It can do it on the face as well. You can do facial massage to build connective tissue. You can do neck massages to build connective tissue to prevent turkey neck. This is true about all the connective tissue in the body, whether you're dealing with arthritis or you're talking about cosmetics, you're talking about the appearance and beauty, but this is especially true about the fibromyalgia patient. The classic feature of fibromyalgia is restriction and stickiness of the connective tissue, especially the fascia. And exercise can play a tremendously valuable role and an important role in loosening adhesions and unsticking the connective tissue. This notion, this idea of moving the body when we're sore or when our muscles are tender may seem counterintuitive. The fibromyalgia patient would be like, no way am I going to be doing stretching exercises. My entire body from head to toe is sore. But as long as you don't have any serious breaks or serious tears, stretching and yoga and exercise can be very helpful for pain relief and for energizing. It's a great way to, de to uh, detoxify. It's also helpful for building new tissue, stronger tissue. And you don't need to have a membership at the gym. You don't need a lot of serious exercise. Just stretching, just yoga, just touching your toes can help. Jog in place, walking up and down the stairs carrying a, a couple of books. Tr try standing on one leg or perhaps uh, standing, on a, uh, uh, standing up from a sitting position. You sit down and you stand up from a sitting position very slowly. Do it once or twice. Take about 30 seconds to stand up from a sitting position. That is an amazing, amazing exercise for your glutes, for your hamstrings, for your quadriceps, for your thighs. Just getting up out of a sitting position or getting up out of a lying down position. The conventional mainstream medicine idea, the big pharma idea for dealing with fibromyalgia is to approach nerves, pain sensing nerves. The fibromyalgia is uh, supposedly has to do with overactivity of these pain sensing nerves. And obviously, if you're feeling pain, this is going to be mediated by the nerves, by neurology. And this focus on pain is unfortunately why the standard medical treatment for fibromyalgia uses pain pills oxycodone, oxycontin, tramadol, muscle relaxants. Sometimes they give you antidepressants, which also have a tendency to dull pain. But at the end of the day, the nerve pain that's associated with fibromyalgia does not occur in a vacuum. It's the result of stickiness. It's the result of adhesions. You're not just randomly feeling pain. The pain itself is the result of the adhesions in the connective tissue, the fascial contractions. And without addressing the fascia, the pharmacomedical protocols will at best be incomplete. Usually they'll be completely useless. At best, they'll just numb you out and you may not feel pain. But typically, medical treatments don't work for fibromyalgia. They'll always cause fatigue, though. They'll always cause mental confusion and digestive symptoms, especially constipation. This is the biggest problem, as anybody who's on pain pills will tell you. That's absolutely not a good thing. First of all, it's going to deprive you of, uh, deprive your body of the ability to absorb nutrients that are important for building connective tissue, for repairing connective tissue. And second of all, if you're constipated and you're taking drugs, now you've deprived yourself of a major route of elimination for the drugs, and you're going to be increasing the toxicity associated with the prescriptions. Of course, in the long run, that's going to make your fibromyalgia even worse, because remember, the fibromyalgia is at least partially the result of toxicity in the first place. And then you have to deal with tolerance and addiction, which is a huge, huge problem in this country, not just because we're in physical pain, but because we're in existential pain. Fibromyalgia, in my opinion, should be called fascia myalgia. Fibromyalgia is a misleading term. If we understand it as fascia myalgia, we will understand, and it will make much more sense, the importance of manipulating the fascia if you're dealing with fibromyalgia. It's no coincidence that the uh, role of fascia when it comes to chronic pain is not recognized. The fascia is, in my opinion, the most important and at the same time the most underappreciated aspect of the body. And if you're going to get effective pain relief, patients and providers, patients and their doctors have to understand exactly how this connective tissue aspect, the fascia, contributes to fibromyalgia pain, contributes to arthritis pain, contributes to overall body pain, as well as accelerated aging. If you want to picture the fascia, think of the shiny outer coating on a raw chicken breast. That's the fascia. You can feel your own fascia right now. Just gently bend your head to the side like you're trying to rest your ear on your shoulder and you're going to feel a pulling or a stretching sensation on the opposite side of your neck from your shoulder to your jaw. That 
pulling action, that tension is the fascia. All right, we'll continue when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. On the bright side, I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com at benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. Got search engines up there and... uh you can search programs, uh, uh, various topics, or you can direct your clients or your patients to various subjects. We've got five, almost six years' worth of programs at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Also, want to remind you to check out our longevity pages. If you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, you can do it right off of brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735. 35-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business and make some money selling longevity products and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, help change lives as well, and then, of course, enjoy all of the benefits of having your own business, making your own hours, working out of home, working out of your home, and uh, enjoying the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Call 866-735-2470, 866 866- 735-2470, and they can give you the uh, full scoop. Okay, so we're talking fibromyalgia. Oh, by the way, our, we do have lines open at 844-236-6010. We're talking fibromyalgia and the fascia. I hope you guys aren't getting sick of hearing about this. It's super important. And not, the connective tissue and the fascia are not just important if you're dealing with fibromyalgia. They're important for dealing with chronic pain. They're important for dealing with arthritis. They're important for dealing with interstitial cystitis. They're important for dealing with TMJ. They're important for dealing with pretty much any health challenge, including cancer, by the way. Uh, any health challenge that you can name, heart disease, disease, cancer, diabetes, they all have at least at least a partial aspect uh, of connective tissue involvement. In some cases, it's all about the connective tissue, specifically about the fascia. I call fibromyalgia fascia myalgia, and that's how we really want to think about it, fascia myalgia. The fascia is this continuous measure, network of connective tissue that wraps the muscles. If you look at a piece of chicken breast, you'll see a white, shiny coating on the surface. <clears throat> Excuse me, that is the fascia. This uh, fascia is very important, not just for separating out the organs and for uh, creating a kind of armoring for all the structures inside the body. The fascia actually contains a lot of pain-sensing neurology. In fact, the fascia has as much pain-sensing neurology, pain-sensing nerves, as the skin does. You can kind of think of it like an interior skin, an inner skin. The fascia not only contains as many, as many pain-sensing nerves as the skin, according to Jill Miller of Jill Miller Studios, she's a yoga and fitness guru, the fascia contains six times more sensory nerves than the muscle does. So when you think you're feeling muscle pain, you may, and I would say you're probably feeling fascial pain. The fascia contracts, it tightens, it locks up, especially in response to trauma and in response to elevated, long-term elevated levels of cortisol, which can follow emotional stresses, psychological stresses, mental stresses. You can actually feel your fascia tighten if you think of something unpleasant, if you think of something scary, if you think of a, a, a past trauma, you can actually feel a contraction of your fascia. If you want to feel your fascia, turn your neck, uh, pull your neck over to the side, like you're trying to rest your ear on your shoulder, and you can kind of feel a stretching sensation on the opposite side of your neck, from your, from your uh, shoulder to your jaw. That pulling action you're feeling is the fascia. It's the fascia stretching. It's the f- you think it's the muscle, but it's not. It's actually the fascia. So the fascia is this internal armor. It separates out muscle fibers. It creates a a, a coating on all of the organs. But the cool thing about the fascia is it's intelligent. It responds to things that are going on in our lives. It responds by contracting. It responds by tightening. It responds by relaxing. It responds by softening, depending on what we are experiencing in our lives. And this tightening is a response to the tightening that's a response to uh, traumas or to lousy things happening in our lives is actually a good thing in the short run. It actually gives our body more strength. It gives our muscles more strength, more springiness. That's why we contract when we're under stress. It's supposed to give our muscles enough spring to get away from a tiger or from a lion. The problem is, is when this is chronic. 
when the fascia is chronically stretched. That's where you run into suffocation of the muscles. That's where you run into restrictions. That's where you run into inflammation. Ultimately, that's where you run into pain. And the average medical professional is not really hip to the, the importance of the fascia. Although I have to say this is changing. The first fascia research congress was held in 2007, and now they do it every year. If you go to PubMed, PubMed.com, that's where I get a lot of my health information from, PubMed, P-U-B-M-E-D.com. Also, Scholar.Google.com, if you're interested in, in just hardcore scientific information. Both of these sites have studies. They don't have any advertising. It's not like regular Google. Scholar.Google is just basically scientific articles. And if you Google fascia, you're going to see, or you you do scholar.google.com or pubmed.com and look for fascia, you're going to see hundreds of scientific articles on the importance of fascia and the relationship of the fascia to chronic long-term health challenges. So fibromyalgia is the result of chronic stress, chronic fight or flight. It involves hormones like estrogen and cortisol. Sugar definitely does not help. Sugar has, a, has an inflammatory effect on the connective tissue. It has a damaging effect on the fascia. Nutritional deficiencies compound the problem. If you're taking pain pills, your nutritional, uh, nutritional deficiencies are likely to be significant. Remember, constipation will keep your body from, uh, not constipation, but digestive health issues will keep your body from absorbing nutrients. Pain pills slow everything down. They also slow down nutritional ab absorption of, nu absorption of nutrients, but primarily when you're talking about fibromyalgia and all chronic illnesses, you're talking about fight or flight and a jacked up adrenal gland system. And then ultimately, when the adrenal glands are jacked up over the course of time, the thyroid slows down. That's really, that's really the jumping off point to all disease, Adre what I call the adrenal thyroid complex. Jacked up adrenals, adrenal stress that continues chronically, eventually will cause the thyroid to slow down. And the saddest part of all of this is that the traumas that we're dealing with in many cases are not real traumas. They're imaginary traumas. They're mental traumas. They're based on our memories. They're based on the past. They're based on our thinking mind. This is so tragic. The relationship of the mind to the body is incredibly important to understand if we're really going to do healing. I can't imagine that there's any long-term chronic illness that is not at least partially caused by mental health issues. And it doesn't have to be blatant mental health issues like blatant depression or, or blatant uh, suicidal thoughts or blatant schizophrenia. It could just be thinking lousy thoughts. It could just be chronic stresses. Andrew Weil says that all illness is psychosomatic. Not that all illness is not real. When we hear the term psychosomatic, we think, oh, it's imaginary. No, it's real, but it's caused by the psyche. Psyche, soma. Psyche means mind, soma means body. Psychosomatic means mind, body. A psychosomatic illness is a body problem that starts off in the mind. According to Dr. Andrew Weil, they're all, all chronic illnesses are psychosomatic. I'm not sure I would go that far, but certainly all chronic illnesses have a psycho somatic component. Remember, the fascia has a memory. And when we think crappy thoughts, it will inevitably show up in the, in the fascial memory. And a lot of times, this is unconscious. A lot of times, the storage in the fascia is, is created by unconscious memories or unconscious thoughts. We don't even know we're thinking. We're not, we don't even know we're thinking lousy thoughts. And we contract. Check out your jaw right now. If you are like many folks, maybe like most folks, including me, you'll notice that your jaw is a little bit tight as you're listening to this program, as you're standing around doing nothing. This is a result of unconscious thinking, unconscious mental, mental activity. All right, I'm Pharmacist. Ben, 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or health, inf health questions, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking fibromyalgia and fascia and... Uh, the fascia is unspeakably valuable, unspeakably important. It's really important for the immune system. This is a, another uh, hidden 
aspect, a hidden role, or at least underappreciated role that the fascia has when it comes to when it comes to health. We think about the fascia. If you've been listening to this program, you've been thinking you're probably thinking that the fascia plays a structural role, and it certainly does. It also plays a role when it comes to pain, as we say, it's uh, it, it's loaded with sensory nerves. But the fascia is also one of the major lines of defense when it comes to the immune system. The blood, uh, blood and the lymph both flow, uh, the flow of both the blood and the lymph are both dependent on the fascia. And when the fascia becomes restricted, when the fascia becomes in inflamed, this can block the flow of blood. This can uh, block the flow of lymph. This can cause immune clogs. This can cause lymphatic congestion. And remember, we always talk about dirty blood as being the cause of all chronic degenerative diseases. Well, sludgy, dirty blood clogged up blood, clogged up circulation can be one of the things that's associated with fascial inflammation or with fascial disruption. This is such an important subject. I hope nobody's getting sick of hearing about this because I've got lots more to say. We're, we're going to talk about more about fibromyalgia on our next program. We'll talk about some interesting body techniques that you can use. And then we'll also talk about the hormone estrogen and its relationship, not just to fascial disruption, but also to fibrosis. A lot of folks are under the impression that uh, estrogen is a youth hormone. It is not a youth hormone. It is a fibrosis inducing hormone. And it's a big problem especially if you're dealing with digestive health issues. Digestive health issues plus estrogen lead to big, big problems, including heart disease and cancer and accelerated aging. And we will continue talking about this very, very important subject in the coming days on the Bright Side. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. Let's say hello and good morning to Dr. Renee in Austin. Hello, Dr. Renee. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to talk to you. Hope I'll see you tomorrow at Brave New Books. Absolutely, with a few of the patients as well. Good deal. You brought uh, multiple patients to my last uh, to the last time uh, my last talk in Austin a couple of I guess about a month ago now. Uh, everybody doing okay? Well, that was really awesome because there's about we brought it was about 18 of us, and um, I got texts the next day that night in fact about how inspired they were um, from That's awesome. hearing what you were saying. I love so, that. It's kind of like I encourage people to listen to you because um, of your chemistry and your physiological, you know, the process of the body and how you, your interest in that part of it. Thank you. A little bit smarter since you're a chemist. And uh, I appreciate so that. That means mm -hmm. a lot to me. Now you're a chiropractor, and you yep. deal with a lot of a lot of structural kinds of things. But sometimes you have biochemical issues that you're dealing with. I know you and I talked about Hashimoto's, and then uh, mm -hmm. what was and also fibromyalgia. We were talking about. You, did you tell me what you want to talk about here today? And by the way, why don't you give the? I have a lot of listeners in Austin, so why don't you give yourself a plug? Give your business a plug. Well, um, I'm Dr. Renee Hilmer, and uh, my office is Essential Chiropractic and Wellness in South Austin. Good deal. And, so and you, and you see. Works out. Huh? You you see patients like a regular chiropractor, and you're you're a clinician as well, right? Yes, um, more or less, more like a wellness. I don't have a. <clears throat> I try not to focus on the symptoms because, as you were saying earlier, I'm much more on the avenue of the belief systems, the psychosomatic, mm. spiritual, mental, emotional. So I'm always trying to get them to change their mind about what, the way and their perceptions. Do you find resistance? Okay. Do you find people are resistant to that, or are they open to that? Um, well, the type of people that are attracted to the office are open to the idea, but changing the mind about your self is hard. It's not resistant; it's just hard to do. And because mm -hmm. it's it habit, it's like a habit. Diet. Mm -hmm. And so people get real excited when they're listening to you saying, "This is so simple. This is great." Um, even the patient you talked with mine earlier this week, she texted me saying that she's super excited and nice. she's going to check back with you in four weeks. And you Love know, it's it. just like having yeah, because having you like tell the patient in a in a positive way that you did it. it like I don't know, it's kind of like listen to him, see what he's saying. <laughs> it's not just me. I love it. All right, good deal. Mm -hmm. So tell tell me how I can help you today. Well, um, well, thanks for talking about the fibromyalgia because I do have a brand new patient this week who's had a headache for 20 years. Oh, my gosh. And they do have her on some very heavy drugs, and she wants off, 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 off. And so, um, and thank you for talking about the blood and the lymph because I told her that. And then when we were listening to it in the beginning, I was thinking, oh, boy, maybe I was wrong. But 
this is going to be really great information for her. She will be there tomorrow night. Oh, good deal. So, make sure she talk. Uh-huh. Make sure she comes up and says hi, and, and I can help her personally. Yes, you might change her. Yes, she's pretty excited about. Um, after her first adjustment, she woke up and had one day of no headache for the first time. That's in 20 awesome. Years. That's awesome. Well, just by body work. Just by doing body work. And just by almost like telling the system, like, wow, do you realize this is about you know uh, blood and about lymph and about it's not what people have been telling you it is, you know? And she said, I never knew that. That's and of awesome. course, I learned that from listening to the bright side and your critical news and all that. So, well, good deal. Um, well, ask, me a, ask me a specific question. How can I help you today? Well, my thing is it's really how when you're talking to people and getting them really excited and then they have to change their mind about their diet because you'll be like, mm-hmm. it's easy. Just don't do this. Just do that. Right. Where, where have you found that they is it, do they have to get that bad before they change? Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of times you do have to get that bad. You know, we have so many incentives to eat. If you just drive down the road, there are signals and and cues and messaging to eat food everywhere you look, billboards and signs and commercials, and it's just so easy to do. It's such an accepted thing. We eat socially, we eat emotionally, we eat psychologically, and and it's just difficult to break that eating habit, and that's why you got to kind of hack into your, your eating behaviors, things like starting off all your meals with fiber, grinding up flaxseed and putting it into almond milk and making a little flaxseed pudding. That's a great strategy for helping diminish the appetite or or hacking into your your food cravings, using vegetable juices at the beginning of your meals, eating more fat, eating more protein, satiety-inducing foods, checking in with your belly. This is another very important strategy. You know, we never listen to our belly. And by the belly, I'm talking about right where the belly button is. That's where your intestines are. How many times do before we eat, do we actually listen to our intestine to see if we really should be eating? I guarantee you, Dr. Renee, if your patients or if anybody listening checks in with their intestine before they start a meal, at least half the time or more, maybe even 60 or 70 percent of the time, you won't eat. If you just check in with your belly. Now, you may still eat because the mind is so powerful, but you'll notice that there's a little bit of resistance. And the more you check in with your belly, the, the greater that resistance is going to be to eating food because the belly is really a brain in and of itself. And it's just as powerful, if not more powerful, as the brain in the head when it comes to at least when it comes to our eating behaviors. So there's all kinds of ways that you can hack into the into the belly, but the problem is is our lives are so stressful and so unpleasant in so many ways that eating is kind of like a pleasure that we can give ourselves. And eating is not supposed to be, that's not the purpose of eating. The purpose of eating is to nourish. It's not to somehow negate or counteract uh, our, our existential misery, the misery that we have for being alive, and we're paying the price for it. All, just like all health challenges have, have a psychosomatic component. All health challenges have a digestive health component. All chronic long-term health challenges. All right, we got to take a break. Hang on, Dr. Renee. We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010. It's our number. Dr. Renee, i got a full board here. Let's, uh, do you have it? I want to make sure you're complete. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow, and we can, we can discuss stuff tomorrow. Anything else you want to add or anything else you have Just to Just one ask? question. Yes, Do ma'am. you recommend iodine for people with Hashimoto's? I recommend iodine for everybody, but it's absolutely 100% not a treatment for Hashimoto's. And anybody, and I hear healthcare professionals say this all the time, and it just ticks me off. It's ignorant. If a healthcare professional says use use iodine to get rid of your Hashimoto's, it's ignorant. I'm not saying they're ignorant. That's an ignorant thing to say. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. It's caused by the same thing that caused all autoimmune diseases, which is dirty blood, which starts off in the digestive system. You, uh, once toxins get into the blood, an immune reaction is mounted in the blood. The, uh, those circulating immune complexes, which are a combination of the immune system and the toxins, end up in various glands and organs and structures of the body, soft tissues of the body, and this is what initiates immune reactions against those glands or soft tissues. It starts off digestive. Does that mean iodine's not important? Of course not. Iodine's incredibly important, but it's not like it's a treatment for hypothyroidism, low thyroid function, or Hashimoto's. So yes, you need iodine, but you need it for your adrenals, you need it for your brain, you need it for your breasts, you need it for your reproductive system, you need it for the thyroid, you need it for a lot of things. It's an incredibly valuable and important 
important nutrient, but it is not a treatment or a cure for thyroid disease. And any medical profession who says, says such a thing should be regarded with great skepticism. So yes, I love iodine, but not as a treatment for Hashimoto's necessarily, Excellent. although it's important. Okay? All right. Thank you, you so much, Dr. Nam. Looking forward to seeing you. Take care. Thanks for the All kind right. words, too. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. Let's move on to Tony in Santa Cruz. Is this, uh, is this singing, Tony? Yeah, Tony? exactly. Exactly. Uh, uh, about a year ago, I gave you some scrub of palmitate. Yes. I told you I was rubbing it into a, a blemish on my face. Well, I'm a total failure as a compounding pharmacist. So I think you were going to give me some kind of a sample you, to use. And then oh, I'll yeah. My omega, I've, been, I've been loving ascorbyl palmitate for decades. And I fell in love with it 25 years, almost 25 years ago when I, I got a call from a dermatologist who had a patient who was a helicopter pilot fighting a forest fire. He crashed into the forest fire, and he had these severe burns. He needed vitamin C. On his skin, the dermatologist wanted me to create a vitamin C product. But we couldn't use ascorbic acid on the burn because on the burnt skin because it it was so, it was so uh, aggressive. It was stinging. It was an acid. So he wanted me to make a vitamin C product for him, and I ended up creating a product that uh, is now my Omega-6 healing cream. Uh, it worked very well. His insurance company ended up paying for it, and I used ascorbyl palmitate. The problem with ascorbyl palmitate, as wonderful as it is, is it's almost impossible to put into a product, which is why you never see it in products. That's why my compounding pharmacy experience can't, comes in so handy when it comes to doing skincare because I figured out how to do it, and I created a very, very powerful and important healing product. And in fact, Tony, since you asked about it, if you'll send an email to ben at ksco.com, I will send you a sample of it. I call it my Omega-6 healing cream, but it's got a whole bunch of ascorbyl palmitate in it, and it's extremely, and I mean extremely soothing and healing for cuts, for scrapes, for burns, uh, and it's also a great moisturizer and anti-aging product as well. So send me an email, Tony, ben at ksco.com, put your address in there, can, and I'll send you I a sample. Can I tell you another thing? Yes. I, What's going? You know, I have no problem uh, avoiding food. I eat my full poached steaks in the morning and then I don't feel like eating anymore and I'm worried and I'm not eating enough because I'm not, I told you I'm plateauing on another show. And uh, I'm at 240 and, and I want to lose 60 more. I've already lost 50. And uh, it's just uh, really perplexing me on how I'm going to Well, do listen, Tony, eating. I'll tell you what, Tony, I've seen you and I know you and you're a miracle. For the listeners, Tony's 83 years old. He looks like a football player. He's got this amazing attitude. Uh, you're a miracle, Tony. You should be doing talks. I'm, lo I'm losing my widower's hump, too. I'm straightening up. I'll gain a half an inch in the height. I believe so, it, thank you Tony. Very much. No, okay. praise God. Thank you're an amazing... You're an amazing specimen, Tony. I'm going to motivate. Good to talk to you. I'll see Thanks you in Santa Cruz in a couple weeks, too. All right. Take okay. care, Tony. Thank Thanks you, for your call. All right. Let's move on to, uh, let's go to, to Elaine. Elaine, my buddy. What's going on, Elaine? How you doing? Elaine in Alaska. I'm doing great. I'm watching a beautiful sunrise here in Alaska. Oh, nice. Nice. What's going on? How can we help you? Yeah, hey, I have a um, pretty complicated patient. She last year had her entire descending colon removed. Oh, my. Yeah, and... What did she have? Did she have Crohn's or something? Um, cancer? Yeah, she has a history of breast cancer. Oh. And, um, did they take it out prophylactically, like she didn't have a problem? or? She was having, um, what is it, the fistulas? Like the, okay, all oh, right. So, yeah, Fistulas so it, are a connective tissue, a connective tissue issue. She's breaking down basically. How old is she? She is in her sixties, and okay. she's dealing with an issue, a little bit of a complication after surgery. Of course, there's kind of a narrowing at the anastomosis, um, and she's very, very interested in doing liquids. Liquids yeah. give her liquid nutrition. Pound the liquid nutrition. Liquid bone soup, uh, bone broth protein, bone soup, aloe vera, fucoidin, beyond tangy tangerine, anything liquid, vegetable juices. My uh, the the almond almond milk put uh, fiber ground up flaxseed fiber with almond milk that we were talking about earlier. Liquids, liquids, liquids. She does need her fiber. That's where the vegetable juices and the and the flaxseeds will come in. But she needs lots of liquid nutrition, especially liquid nutrition, uh, liquid protein, and liquid connective tissue building nutrition. Don't forget the vitamin C. You can't build connective tissue without vitamin C. Keep her sugar intake down as best as possible and continue with the body work. I assume you're doing body work. Continue yeah. with that. 
and also abdominal massage. Do you know anything about that? Have you ever seen abdominal massages for breaking up adhesions? Actually, yeah, we do a lot with uh, the counter strain technique, which it releases the fascia naturally. That's like awesome. Up. For yeah. breaking scar tissue, for breaking adhesions? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome that's, stuff. So sh I'm trying to get her off. She's taking Boost. <laughs> Sorry for using a brand name. I and know. the Activa, like, you'll Yeah. Work. You know, that, that's Where's unfortunate. High fructose corn syrup is like the first ingredient in those things. Hi, and options? the options are whey protein, bone broth protein, whey protein. It, my bone broth protein, you get it from brightsidehealth.com, is so delicious. You're not even going to want to touch boost. And if you use some Beyond Tangy Tangerine with it, you'll get everything you need. Don't forget digestive enzymes on an empty stomach. Uh, that can help break up the adhesions. Also, of course, with meals and apple cider vinegar with meals, eat less food in general and make, uh, make sure that the food she as as much food that she as much of her food is liquid that's really important for folks who are dealing with colon problems or have had uh, parts of their colon removed liquid nutrition i can't emphasize that enough even iv nutrition actually if she wants to go all out that's also a good thing but if she doesn't want to do that liquid nutrition especially soups bone soup and then smoothies and vegetable juices and she's going to have to be on tangy tangerine but she's had problems with reflux and citrus so she's a little concerned well you, the beyond tangy tangerine is not going to do that but sm uh, there's very little citrus in there uh, okay. and small doses on the beyond tangy tangerine and don't forget probiotics either. I, I forgot to mention that. Probiotics, good bacteria with the vegetable juices. The combination of vegetable juice and vegetable fiber and probiotics. The combination of those is very helpful for the digestive system because the probiotics and good bacteria eat the fiber. They subsist on the fiber and they proliferate and they also subsist on the nitrogen that's found in the vegetables. So the combination of veggie juices and veggie soups and uh, Excuse me, and probiotics goes go together real well. Okay, hey, Lana, I'm gonna. Did you have I, anything else? Real quick, she's had yeah. blocks with um, fiber, so she has to really watch that. Small if, amounts. If she small amounts of fiber. Ups her probiotics. Will that help? Yeah, she'll need small amounts. You can't overdo the fiber quickly. You got to kind of build okay. yourself gradually. Go into it. Too much fiber all at once, especially if she has a colon problem, can cause some some distress. So sl start off slowly with the fiber and work herself into it. Start off maybe with a teaspoon. I will share this with her, and thank you so much for giving so much of your time and energy to someone. Oh, praise God. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Have a beautiful day, Elaine. Th take care now. Good to Bye. talk to you. All right. Let's go to, do, 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 let's go to, oh, John in Connecticut. has been holding on forever. Hi, John. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Um, I'm calling about my mother-in-law, who is uh, 90, 90, 93 years old this uh, coming oh. May. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Uh, How's she doing? Yeah, bad. Uh, two days ago, she's got um, a fracture in the hip. Oh, okay, so she's starting and to starting to break. the bones are starting to break down. That's amazing. She's ninety three. She walking around? Is she in a wheelchair? Is she getting around? Uh, right now, she's in the hospital, and doctors are uh, contemplating of replacing her uh, her hip. Her, oh my gosh, she's ninety three years old, and they want to do a hip replacement. That's called. That's called medical marketing. That's terrible. All right, I'm out of time here. Here's what you need to do. Glucosamine, bone soup, protein, liquid protein, vitamin C in high doses, but you gotta build her up slowly. She'll probably have a hard time doing too high a dose, but so maybe start off with a gram or so and then work, work herself, work her into a little bit more. Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Ultimate EFAs, digestive enzymes, there's so many things you could do. Uh, and I would not, if it was me, I wouldn't do a hip replacement. She's gonna have to make her own decisions. But at the age of 93, that's crazy. Hey, listen, I only got 30 seconds here. I'm sorry. If you could send me an email, ben at ksco.com and put your phone number in there, John, I'll get you some personal information, okay? And I'm sorry, to, uh, uh, we just ran out of time. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular, awesome day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.